All right, guys, today we're going to be deconstructing the physics IA and going through exactly what the syllabus and the physics guide asks and requires from you. So we're going to be reading through it. I'm going to be analyzing through which aspects I use and which aspects you should pay much more attention to than you probably hope and think. So there'll be a few surprises here, but hopefully it should all make sense. The first thing we're going to start off with is let's read straight through it. So first of all, it is worth 20% for every single student, SL and HL, and it's exact same marking criteria for both SL and HL. And 20% is a big deal, especially, it's the only 20% you can control in your whole physics. Uh, of course, the other 80% are your final exam, so you wanna make sure that you get as many points, as many marks as you can within this 20%, because you never know in your final exams, you might do a little worse than you expected, and this 20%, or at least in my school, my cohort, it normally brings people up and drags people up to the next grade boundary because they might have gotten a 7 in the physics A, a 5 in paper 1, a 6 in paper 2, and a 5 in paper 3, and they still manage to get a 6 only due to their physics A. So that can be super useful. So make sure you focus, listen up tight, take some notes if you have to, and let's get straight into this. So first of all, it's the new assessment marking criteria. Let's look through that. Oh, and also I got 20 out of 24 points for those that are interested, and yeah, let's get into it. So first of all, something I want to point out is how much of the physics I is actually not worth on the physics itself. Let me explain. So let's look at the internal assessment IA marking criteria. So 8% is worth on personal engagement. We'll go through this later on, but essentially this has nothing to do with physics. So that 8%, nothing to do with physics. The 25% exploration as well as the analysis, so 50% in total, of course that's got to do with physics. It's about how you explore the topic and how you analyze the data, collect the data, error bars, error propagation, all that sort of stuff. So that of course has to do with your physics knowledge. Then 25% comes from the evaluation and actually going through what you could have improved, what you didn't do right, and just all other things you need to evaluate. And lastly, communication, another 17%. So what I'm trying to point out is that 50% half of your IA marks have nothing to do with how well you know the physics theory or how well you know the, yeah, the physics theory and knowledge. So even if you find physics quite challenging or you struggle with physics, you should at least be easily getting those 10 or those 12 out of the 24 marks, sorry. So make sure you really focus, especially on those marking criteria. So let's get into it. Mark criterion A, personal engagement. So let's read it out. The criterion assesses the extent of which students engages with their exploration and makes it their own. The key factor that a lot of people skip is that you have to make it your own, you have to make it personal. After all, it's all about personal engagement. How is this relevant to you? Why did you pick it? And if we continue going, these, for example, it could include addressing personal interests, and it needs to show evidence of independent thinking, creativity, or initiative in the designing, implementation, or presentation of the investigation. So what they're saying is that they want it to be unique, they want it to be different, they want it to be relevant and specific to you. You can't just copy someone else's IA and say it's yours, because every person's different, so therefore everyone's IAs should be completely different. So if, you, if you're trying to measure gravity by dropping a ping pong ball, how can you make it relevant to you? How can you make it specific to your interests or some other situation that you might show some creativity or initiative in. So just keep that in mind whenever you're picking an IA, make sure that you can make it relevant to you. It might be hard, and it normally is quite hard for most of the topics, but you can always find a connection, you can draw a string from somewhere and make it relevant. And that can be really useful for these two marks, which should be relatively easy. And now if you look at the actual marking criteria, it says that the investigation demonstrates personal significance. So what this means is that the results, the findings from your IA are actually significant to you and your personal life. So this is vital. Make sure that whenever you're doing this, whenever you're doing your IA, that the results actually have an impact on you. So you can put this in the introduction. Say, this is why I chose it. This is why it fascinates me. From this, I hope to understand why, or it will teach me why, or it will teach me how, or it will I'll be able to grasp the conceptual understanding of insert your topic. So just things like that, make sure it is personal and relevant to you. Now let's keep going into criterion B, exploration, which is worth a good few marks. So let's read it out. This criterion assesses the extent to which the student establishes a scientific context for the work, states a clear and focused research question and uses concepts and techniques appropriate to the diploma. And it also shows awareness of safety, environmental and ethical considerations. Now, before we think about this too far, I want to go back to the beginning, scientific context. What this means is that, for example, if you're trying to find the acceleration of gravity on Earth, at least, you need to make sure that your results, or at least you should mention that this has already been found, or all of our results, honestly, have been found and proven within the scientific context. So whenever you find your results, 
you have to say whether this aligns or does not align with the results that have been established within the scientific context and scientific community. So make sure you always refer to studies that have already happened and accurate studies that are much more accurate and precise than what we're doing in our labs at schools within our IA. So if we keep going, it also says a clear and focused research question. We'll go over this later, but make sure it is focused. It is very clear and specific. And something that I didn't really realize until I read through the I, until I read through the marking criteria is that you need to show awareness or you should show awareness of the safety implications, environmental consideration, and if applicable, ethical considerations. So all of these should go within the beginning, towards the beginning, right next to, I'd say right next to methodology at least, before or after, doesn't really matter. But make sure you show the consideration saying, I chose this material to make my pipe because of the environmental reasons or also safety, because if I made it out of metal, it'd be a danger hat, it'd be hazardous in case someone dropped and it fell on my toe compared to a plastic PVC pipe that's not as it's not as hard, it's not as heavy. So different things. So make sure you try to include the safety, environmental and ethical considerations. So now if we go into the marking criteria, what I've done here is that the red and the green are the differences between the second highest and the highest marking mark band. Sorry. So if we look, it says the topic of the investigation is identified and a relevant and either not fully focused or fully focused research question is fully and clearly described. So that is the only difference. If your research question is fully focused on your actual topic and your research question completely aligns with what your whole IA and all the contents of your IA include, then it's perfect. You'll get at least this top mark band for this section. So make sure it's fully focused. Now, if we continue, the background information provided for this investigation is either entirely appropriate or mainly appropriate. So this also refers back to the scientific background and scientific context is that you need to show that you actually know and that you've researched this, or, um, this topic already and you understand how other people have done it, the results other people have gained and how this might influence and impact the way you achieve your results. So make sure that all of the background information, you only include what is relevant. We'll see this later in the last criteria in communication, but essentially everything you put in your IA has to be concise and it must be relevant to your topic and to your research question. There's no point First of all, you only have 12 pages. Six, it says six or 12 pages max. Do not go over 12 pages, otherwise you'll stop reading. Uh, I said it outlines it in the IA guide anyway. But essentially, you wanna make sure that everything you include is concise and completely relevant to your findings and to the research question and to your topic as well. So if we now continue to the third one, the methodology of the investigation is either highly or mainly appropriate. Once again, everything has to be appropriate and relevant. This is a recurring theme throughout the physics guide. It says that it also takes into consideration all or only some of the significant factors that may influence the relevance, reliability, and sufficiency of the collected data. So it's pretty simple, pretty easy. So all the errors you have to, whenever you do error propagation, we'll talk into the physics about the physics side of error, pro error propagation later on, sorry. But it's also about errors. Where do they come from? Maybe when you, for example, in my one, I had a PVC pipe and I had to cut a few holes. Whilst my drill bit might have said it's four millimeters, in real life it could have been 4.3 millimeters, who knows? Because the drill bit wasn't straight, it was at an angle. Maybe the drill size was actually bigger, it had expanded because it's getting hotter, maybe it had melted the plastic. You never know all these small things. But you gotta explain them and you gotta show a full awareness that so you take into consideration all of the significant factors that may influence the relevance, reliability, and sufficiency of the collected data. And make sure also it is a physics eye, so you have to really explicitly di um, differentiate relevance, reliability, and sufficiency. So you want to make sure that you don't just say this affected all of them, because no, honestly, it would. Some factors only affect the reliability. Some factors that, um, change the accuracy, and some change the precision. So make sure that you mention these. Lastly, the report shows evidence of full awareness or some awareness of the significant safety ethical or environmental issues. We talked about this earlier, but really I didn't realize this until I read it. So make sure you include safety, environmental and ethical considerations in your introduction or somewhere close to the top. Now, if we keep going, the next criterion is analysis, which is a big one. So let's read through this. This criterion assesses the extent to which the student's report provides evidence that the student has selected, recorded, processed and interpreted the data in ways that are relevant to the research question and can support a conclusion. So essentially, once again, everything has to be relevant. We've gone over this already 10 times at least. So whenever you talk about anything, whenever you analyze something, whenever you analyze data, don't just go on a rant for no reason because it made sense and you, because you read about it in the textbook. Make sure it is relevant to um, your guy, is relevant to your topic and is relevant to your research question. And whenever you find this, yes, it might be relevant, 
but then you have to make sure that you can actually formulate your data into a conclusion. You can make sure this is your data, this is where you analyze it, and then it becomes a nice, simple conclusion. It has to be very clear. Now, if you look at the difference between the second and the highest mark man, it says the report includes either sufficient relevant data or incomplete relative data. So this should be pretty easy. Make sure you have a few trial, you have a few trials, don't just have one trial and bang, that's it. For example, I had six trials in mine. Um, you have got to change. Yeah, try to improve the accuracy and precision of your physics IA data because that should be a pretty easy one to get. So make sure all the raw data is sufficient. And of course, you can't have a detailed and valid conclusion if you've only done one trial or one run of your results. Make sure you've got a good amount of data to work with and a good amount of data points as well. At least what my teacher told me, and I'd recommend this too, is that whenever you're trying to find a line of best fit or whenever you're trying to find a trend, you need at least four different data points. It's hard when you have three because you, you never know if it's exponential, logarithmic, you have no idea. So make sure you have at least four, but of course I, I had 10 or 12, something like that. So make sure you have as many as possible. Now, if you go to the next one, appropriate and sufficient data processing is carried out with the accuracy required to enable a conclusion to the research question to be drawn that is fully consistent with the experimental data. Meanwhile, the other one says that there are inaccuracies and inconsistencies in the processing. All this is saying is that you, if you have good results, if you have good data, you'll get good results. You can't have bad data and get good results. That's There's nothing more to it. So make sure that your data isn't completely out of whack. It's not too inaccurate. Make sure your data is nice, accurate, and precise as much as possible, at least. And even if you have some inaccurate data, you can talk about it within your error, in the error propagation back in the introduction that we just mentioned. But of course, try to reduce the error as much as you can, as much as you can. But either way, you will have to include in the error propagation later on. So either way, you'll have to do that. Next, it says, it says the report shows evidence of some consideration or full and appropriate consideration of the impact of measurement and uncertainty on the analysis. So this goes back to topic one of the actual syllabus, uh, measurements and un errors and uncertainties, sorry. So you should already know this pretty well, how to measure uncertainties and how to calculate them. But this is a key part of your IA. This is really what they're testing you on. The physics knowledge is testing you on the knowledge that you found online and then the textbook. And the other key thing is that you can linearize and make a graph, but really the most important one, or at least in my opinion, from what I see here in the, in the physics guide, sorry, is error propagation. You need to be able to propagate error very accurately as well as you can. So make sure that you really take full and appropriate consideration of the impact of measurements and uncertainty on the analysis. And finally, as I said before, it all has to lead to a valid and detailed conclusion compared to an incomplete or limited conclusion. Very simple, pretty easy. So now let's keep going to the evaluation. Now it says that this criterion assesses the extent to which students report provides evidence of evaluation of the investigation, the results with regard to the research question and the accepted scientific context. All this is saying is that you need to evaluate what were the pros and cons of your methodology, how did the error play a role within your IA, and how did this directly affect the results, and also how do your results actually correspond and relate to what is known in the scientific field and what is generally accepted uh, within the scientific community. So you have to, once again, relate this to the scientific community and the, the accepted scientific context. Now, if we look at the mark bands, once again, the difference is that a detailed conclusion is either described or described and justified. So you'll see this throughout the rest of this marking, mark band and marking criteria, but really you have to justify every single thing you come to a conclusion with. If you think, if you have results and say, okay, this demonstrates this, why? You always need a because or due to, whatever it is, make sure you justify every single thing, every, everything you come to within your IA. So if you continue, a conclusion is either correctly described or described and justified, same, same as before. However, here it says, through relevant comparison or through some relevant comparison to the accepted scientific context. So whenever you're making comparison or whatever you're showing your results compared to the scientific context, again, every single thing has to be concise and it has to be relevant to your topic and to your research question. So don't go on a tangent about something that's not really related. It has to be directly related as it says here. It has to be a very relevant comparison. If we keep going, strengths and weaknesses of the investigations are discussed or are described. So the difference really is that described is just saying, this happened, therefore I have error. I mean, I'll discuss is you saying, this could have happened, however, this also could have had another impact. So discuss, it's more of an all-round, more of a holistic approach to 
your error propagation and to different aspects, different methods that could have impacted the error in your study. And again, it shows the difference between some awareness of the methodolo methodological issues compared to a clear understanding of the issues there. So if we go to the last line, it says that the student has either described or discussed realistic, and listen to this, realistic and relevant suggestions for the improvement and extension of the investigation. Now this is actually found in basically every single IA that I found. It was in my geography IA, it's the same with the physics IA. You have to show suggestions for the improvement and extension. However, whatever you have to do is that you can't just say this would improve it and this would extend it. You also have to justify it, as with all the rest of the stuff in the physics IA, you have to justify why that would be a good idea and why those and why your suggestions would actually improve the accuracy, precision, or whatever else you talk about, how else it would improve the findings and why else it is necessary, at least for you it is, because remember, don't forget about, about personal engagement. It has to be relevant to you about why these suggestions would have a real world, real world impact and why would they be significant to you. So make sure they include how to improve and extend the investigation. And lastly, the last one, communication out of four marks. So if we read it out, it says, this criterion assesses whether the investigation is presented and reported in a way that supports effective communication on the focus, process, and outcome. So that's a bit hard to understand what on, what on earth are they talking about. Let's go to the mark band to find out. So the difference is that the presentation of the investigation is either clear or unclear, and the errors either do not hamper understanding or the IA is difficult to understand. So essentially, it's very obvious, very clear, you'd presume so. Your IA has to be clear, has to be very easy to understand because the markers, put it this way, it's their job, okay? They have a 20, 40, 80, who knows, loads of IAs to read and not a matter, not much, not a lot of time to go through it. So they're really only gonna go through your, your IA once. So if your IA doesn't make sense and they don't fully understand the scope of your IA after reading it the first time, and they're probably gonna be speed reading it. They're not gonna be looking at every single letter in detail. They'll be speed reading it. That's their job. That's probably what they will be doing. It's, it's a harsh truth. So remember that your investigation must be clear and super easy to understand. Yes, as we mentioned here, you will need the use of subject-specific terminology and conventions and it has to be appropriate and correct without too many errors as it says here. However, you still wanna make sure that it's easy to read, it is very clear, nicely formatted and all of the above. So if we continue with that, just as I said, the report is either not well-structured and unclear or well-structured and clear and it is presented in either an incoherent or coherent way. It's pretty simple, you should be able to understand from those two sentences if we keep going. The understanding of the focus, process and outcome of the investigation is either obscured, listen to this, obscured by the presence of inappropriate or irrelevant information compared to relevant and concise information that facilitates, sorry, the understanding of the focus of the investigation. So what this is saying is that the scientific context is actually embedded throughout the IA. You don't just have low scientific context bang and then you just keep going and then it doesn't relate to the rest of the IA. You wanna make sure that you include small sections of scientific context throughout whenever it's relevant. It says here that it has to be one, relevant and concise. So make sure that whenever you include other information, you make sure it's all relevant and it's all required and it's done in a concise manner. You only have 12 pages. That's not that much to work with. So if we read the last one again, is that you need to include subject specific terminology. What they mean by this, you can see here, it's about how you mislabel or label graphs, tables, images and the, your use of decimal places and all these small things like that, but they all do add up. So other than that, that is the end. Thank you so much guys for listening and I hope this really helped you for your physics IA. And of course, good luck guys in your IA and good luck with your exams. Thanks for listening.